Hi, my name is Bill Mould, and this discussion is about the brittle fracture of a spoke. And we will briefly join a discussion from my video series, The Bicycle Wheel Physics and Engineering, that pertains to that problem. This chapter will explore some testing I did on a variety of spokes using what's called a load cell and the resulting deformation of those spokes under certain load situations. The testing was done in the engineering lab at Duke University, which hosts the Pratt School of Engineering. This is the apparatus I used. It's a Tinius Olsen 50 kilonewton strain gauge load cell. On the left, I'm fitting a spoke into the jaws of the load cell and on the right, attaching the extensiometer to it. This is a close-up of the extensiometer, which will measure the elongation of the spoke when it is stretched. This is the computer that runs the load cell and also records the data. In the next few slides, you'll see some short movies, and what you'll see is this. If this line here represents the starting point of the of the movable jaw as the spoke is stretched you'll see the jaw move upward with added tension and you'll see a little gap develop a minute later we see that our original line here has now moved up to that point there and that was our original straight line where the spoke is elastic that's the yield point and now we have gone beyond the yield point up into this plastic region. Let's continue to increase the load. Ductile materials experience extensional strain in a process known as necking down, which looks like this. And then it breaks in a way that we have depressions on the left and protrusions on the right. This, when it happens, is known as ductile failure. We see that in this rod here that was stretched beyond its maximum tensile strength. This is a picture of a couple of bolts that were used by students in the engineering course at Duke. And these were regular hardware store kinds of bolts, but under the enormous stress put on these by that 50,000 Newton Tinius Olsen load cell, even these can be stretched to the point of breaking. Notice how it tapers down at the point of fracture. Here's another picture that shows the tapering down. And here is a spoke where the same thing has happened. This thinning process is also known as necking down and it is characteristic of the failure mode of ductile materials. And this is a Supreme CX ray oval spoke and it also tapered down before breaking. Next, I'm going to show you some close-up imagery of ductile failure in metals. Notice the cup-like depressions in the surface, like this one here, 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 and elsewhere. This is indicative of and typical of ductile failure. Ductile failure can also be seen in aluminum rims. It's interesting to look at ductile failure under an electron microscope, and when we do, we see something like this. This line at the bottom is 100 microns, or 100 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And if you look around, you'll see a whole bunch of little depressions in the surface of the metal that you're looking at. And here it is magnified farther. 
you can very clearly see the cup-like depressions in the surface. And just to make sure we understand how detailed this is, if that is 20 microns or 20 millionths of a meter, that is one micron or one millionth of a meter. If we look at the statics of a vertically unloaded wheel, we see very large forces that are all in balance. 99% of the time that when bicycle spokes break while riding the bike, they break at the ends, either at the elbow or at the threaded end where the nibble is. So when a spoke breaks in the middle, you can be sure it is not metal fatigue. It could be externally caused damage to the spoke or a very cheap quality material or a defective batch of normally high quality metal. This was a spoke that broke in the middle. You can see that this piece extended out to the sides and I suspect that this was a defective batch of normally high quality metal. To find out, we need the help of a scanning electron microscope. And Stephen Farias, PhD at Johns Hopkins University. This is a scanning electron microscope, and this part here is an electron gun. The beam is focused by high voltage and powerful magnets. We snip off a very short piece at the end of the spoke put it right here, close the door and evacuate the chamber. I should preface this next section by saying that reading electron microscope imaging is very complicated and you have to be an expert to do it and glean all the possible information. It's very possible for things to fracture for a combination of reasons. Here's a picture of the end of the spoke at relatively low magnification. Here at higher magnification. And still even higher magnification down into the nanometer range. So I think that the evidence is quite clear that my going in theory of brittle failure of the spoke was correct. And that the spoke was made originally from poor quality material. I hope you found that interesting and thought-provoking. Here is my contact information.